Thank you for tuning in tonight. During the week, we do one episode in the Lumumba Files where we take an issue and we break it down. I want to tell you a story. When I was a little kid, I was that child who every parent was worried for me to be around their children. I was not the right child to expose your children to. You know, my best friend till today has a scar on their back where I took the iron, put it on the stove, put it on my friend's back because I really wanted to see what would happen if you'd actually burn someone with the stove. I was a very bad kid. But my mother started teaching me a lesson. And the lesson was whenever we have visitors, you change the way you behave and you fit in so that you always put another face forward. It's called acting. Something Zimbabweans do a lot. We act a lot. Men act a lot when they're trying to mack on Zimbabwean women. Zimbabwean women act a whole lot more when they're talking to Zimbabwean men. We're a country full of actors. Except the problem is we don't act at the right platforms. Here is what I'm trying to explain. Our country is going through the most active political period perhaps we've ever gone through as a country since independence. And here's what's happening. You have those who support ZANU-PF being fanatics. You have those who support MDC being fanatics. In the process, we are both very unforgiving. It's almost as if ZANU-PF believes Emerson Mnangagwa does nothing wrong. MDC believes Nelson Chamisa does nothing wrong. I call it the godification of political icons. We did this with Robert Mugabe. We ended up with a big problem. Go on your Twitter. Look at the way MDC supporters have treated people like Fadzai Mahere, people like Trevor uh, Nube, the way they've treated people like Alex Magaisa, who is from the same party. It's almost as if Nelson Chamisa has now become such a god that if you attack anything he says, then you are a bad person, then you are a bad Zimbabwean. Here is the problem, Zimbabwe. The whole world is watching us right now. Right now, we are that house where relatives have just shown up or friends of the parents have just shown up and they're watching how we behave. Nelson Chamisa is in the United Kingdom this week. A lot of meetings are taking place. MDC, a couple of things come with this stage which has now been brought to you for the second time running. I will help you digest and understand it. Nelson Chamisa's first meeting when he got into the United Kingdom was with the Zimbabwean diasporian community and they met in Bedford. Everything went wrong. It was planned badly. It was timed badly. You had the president of the party standing on a coffee table gambling his sister to the incumbent president in front of the world's community. Here is where the problem is. It's not that the joke is not a joke or what Nelson Chamisa is really offensive because the truth is, if we really wanted to talk about sexual harassment, if we really wanted to talk about underage marriage, if we really wanted to talk about the rights of women in this country, there are platforms where these things are on steroids. What Nelson Chamisa did was exercise political banter. The trouble with what he did is he exercised it at the wrong platform. Mr. Chamisa, you are now at a platform where the world is watching you. You are now at a platform where you have to demonstrate that you are something different than I am. That you are something different than Tajamuka is. That you are something different than Pastor Ivan Mawarire is. You are a presidential candidate. His second meeting was at uh, Oxford University. One of the young girls who got up to speak, her name is Vara Izokativu. Vara Izokativu has been covered everywhere in the press in the United Kingdom for her efforts towards equalizing and creating an equilibrium where young people from the ethnic minority groups, they call it BAME in the UK, can access Ivy League University such as Oxford Union. When she got up to speak, you didn't say her name, you didn't remember her name. Thankfully, she remembered the night you spent with her as she then thanked you over Twitter for spending the night with her. That part, but Mr. Chamisa, when you are now at that stage, you remember people's names. The next young Zimbabwean who got up is a guy by the name of Gorezaishe Makubise. He's a PhD uh, student in engineering at Oxford Union. Again, Mr. President, when you are speaking to this young man, number one, you remember his name. Politicians everywhere in the world do this. Look at Bill Clinton. The finest orators and speakers in the world always remember the, can the person they're speaking to name. Look at Bill Clinton. Look at uh, JFK Kennedy. Look at Barack Obama. Look at Robert Mugabe. Look at any politician you might want to look at, including, including Morgan Changirai, your mentor. Remember the names of the people you're speaking to. Here is the problem you had at Oxford Union. I know it's easy for everybody to start clapping their hands and say you did well. Mr. President Chamisa. Instead of practicing what you're going to do when you get into State House, 
instead of practicing how you're going to salute the vanguard of the party into state house practice what you're going to say when you have an opportunity to speak at Oxford Union. I listened to your speech over and over again and I broke it down. Not one time did you, did you break down any statistic. Not one time did you break down any economic figure of what is happening in the country. Not one time did you provide a solution that is based on fact or science of what is happening in Zimbabwe. For the full time you spoke at Oxford Union, you spoke off the cuff. There is a reason people write speeches, Mr. President, is so that they stick to a script. A script is important because it helps you narrate your issue in a way that is ultimately understood but does not forget crucial elements out. You were asked a question about wildlife. You had no facts on your hands. This is why I like the fact that you have Tendai Biti with you because Tendai Biti will bore you to death, but he will bore you to death with facts. That's what Tendai Biti will do. You're not a preacher. Mr. President, you are not a preacher. You are a politician who's in primetime TV. When you get the microphone and the limelight is on you, you speak fact. I'm glad you fixed that when you go to Chatham House. The performance there was a little bit more improved. You gave a little bit more uh, statistic on the economy. But here are the issues you're not talking about, Mr. President. When you speak about the currency deficit we have in this country, give solutions to how you are actually going to fix the currency problem. You can't say the solution to the currency problem is a confidence issue. Okay? That's not a good argument. Now, it is a reasonable argument to say, yes, there is not enough confidence in our banking sector or in our banking system. That's why people are not putting money in the bank. But there's a bigger issue outside of the fact that there is no confidence in the market. There is no productivity. Start talking about productivity. You're speaking to people who have budgets to bring in manufacturing plants in the country. Start talking about manufacturing. Start talking about Willowville. Start talking about the fact that in this country, now St. Chimisa, tell them in case you don't know, that in this country, we are the only tire manufacturing company outside of South Africa between here and the Congo. So we were the country where everybody came to get tires from. Do you remember Dunlop, that company? That was a Zimbabwean company. Talk about that. Talk about the, the productivity of the roses we used to send when we used to farm and send roses to the Netherlands. Speak about that. General Mujuru used to be the king of that cartel which exported roses out of the country. Talk about the wine. Remember Green Valley wine? We used to have wineries in this country where we made wine, we exported to the rest of the region. Let them know that you understand where the country came from, where the country is, and where the country can go. Stop talking about Mnangagwa. You don't get that big a platform, Nelson, and start talking about Mnangagwa. You will not win the election because of how much you know about Mnangagwa. You win the election because of what vision you can sell us. Here is the ultimate problem you have, Nelson, and you know that I am a fan of yours. You know I think nothing but good things of you and your enemy, your friends and fans and fanatics who come and attack me after this. You have a meeting tonight with Harriet Baldwin. You, had a meet, you have a meeting tonight with Boris Johnson. Understand Boris Johnson is one of the most brutal economists in the United Kingdom. One of the most brutal economists. He is the guy who is single-handedly navigating and negotiating how Britain is going to dispatch itself from, a Europe, from the Eurozone, from a Euro market. He is the guy who was involved in serious tense negotiations about how the, 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 the great United Kingdom kept their currency while they were in the Eurozone and everybody else was using the Euro. You're speaking to an economist now. Don't go there and start talking This is not a provincial stage. I am giving you these tips to say when you get on that stage, chinja gear, ekta mwana wa mai, ekta firima. Imbomira zvekuda kuna matira varungu. You're talking to a country which is closing down churches. So we're not really trying to be talking to them about religion. You're trying to talk to them about economics. Remember, you're speaking to a rightist government. The conservative government is a rightist government. The same government that went into negotiations with ZANOPF about land reform. Speak to them about property rights. Speak to them about how do you deal with the land reform issue. Speak to them about how you deal with title deeds, about how you deal with indigenization. Speak to them about how you deal with the free market. Speak to them about how you deal with um, um, one visa uh, across the continent. Speak to them about how you deal with open markets, Comesa, SADAC. Those are the issues you have to elevate yourself to. And I'm saying this to say, the same way I used to act when relatives would come to the house. I used to act when I went to school. 
I was the same kid who on my first day of primary school, I stuck bubble gum in, the, in girls' heads because I used to go to Waskana. Then I went to the road, I was going to go to Waskana, I was going to go to primary school. I was going to go to Waskana. Panda got this any time, there are no yanga, uno favirida, Chishona chinuti, Rino yanga, Rino, Warara, Rino simuzam soro, Rawana, Sakamudara, Kan or Gunyanga Gunzogu, Usanyango Chipaza, Usanyango Chifumuka, Usanyango Chifumura. Politicians have done an excellent job of dividing this country right now. I want to speak to Zimbabweans and I want to say this. While we are all eager to say something, right now everybody has something to say about everything that is happening in the political scene. The problem is this, when we speak by ourselves, oh yes, let's argue. Oh yes, let's ratch each other out until we find the finest, until we find the finest arguments or the finest ideas that move this country forward. Let's agree that we may disagree, but we all love this country. We may disagree on how to move it forward, but surely we all love this country. Undressing your president is not going to make you look like a better man. Even I have things I don't like about Emerson Munangagwa. But when I come on this platform, I remember that I cannot address him on this platform. I know but I mean, obvious. Nelson, as you have this opportunity to sell yourself, and I want you to sell yourself well, do not sell yourself at the expense of selling the country out. Do not up yourself at the point, at, at, the, at the cost of bringing the country down. I want to wrap up tonight. I'll meet you guys at my show tomorrow, ZFM Stereo, every Thursday at 8.30. Tomorrow, I break down how politics should be done instead of how it is being done. Because right now, politics is being done in a way where it's about the leaders and not about the people. It's about them ruling us and not governing us. We're not talking about the ideas of Zimbabweans. We're talking about the ideas of politicians. And there is nothing, there is nothing more dangerous than the ideas of politicians. Stupidity is like death. And most politicians are full of stupidity. And you know what death does? Death will hurt those who you leave behind. Him or she who is dead feels no pain. So the way you are being so stupid, you politicians, I know you don't feel the pain, but us who are looking up to you, with the stupidity you're exemplifying to the world. My name is Lumumba Lumumba Lumumba. I say it three times because I can't let you be ignorant enough to forget it. See you tomorrow. Hi guys, thank you for supporting the Lumumba Files. To make sure you don't miss a show, press the subscribe button below and the notification button, that's the one with the little bell, and you will always get told when I put up a show. Thank you for watching, head bowed.